Well, good afternoon, Calvary Kids. It is another Wednesday, and this week uh, we are going to be ending our time in the book of Jeremiah. What a ride it's been for Jeremiah. It's been rejected time and time again. And um, as we get into the story, first I want to kind of give you a, a story just to make you really understand what he's trying to get to. And this story comes straight out of our curriculum we do on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. And so here's what the story is. I want you to imagine that you are in your classroom, okay? So you're back in your classroom. I know it's been uh, over a month now that you haven't. But imagine you're in your classroom and you have a pet in the classroom. Uh, let's call him uh, Harvey. And the, Harvey is this uh, hamster that you have. And so um, every week... Harvey, get, every weekend, Harvey gets to go home with a different kid. And you've been waiting and you've been excited, but now it's your turn. And so when you go to your teacher, your teacher gives you some handwritten instructions on this is how you're to take care of Harvey the hamster. And if you do this really well, when you come back, guess what? Harvey's going to be just as well taken care of as every other time. That the, every, that the other kids have taken care of them. And so that's what you do. You're so excited. You bring Harvey home. You put him in your room. You put him on a desk or a table in your room. And you set him down. And you set the paper down with the instructions. And then you say, Mom goes, hey, it's, it's time for dinner. And so you, you go and eat dinner. And time and time and time goes by. And, and now it's time for you to bring Harvey back to your classmates. And when you bring Harvey back to your teacher and you walk him over to your teacher and you set him on her desk, your teacher goes, Harvey's not alive. You see, you had the best of intentions to take care of Harvey, but you know what? You got busy. Things happened. You had your sports. You had your schoolwork. You had your chores around the house. You had all of these things that you had to do and you really didn't think about Harvey. Harvey was kind of just this extra thing that was in your room. You forgot to feed him. You forgot to give him water. You forgot to change his crate. And so now Harvey is dead. You see, we see in the book of Jeremiah a very similar thing. God has been warning his people through Jeremiah time and time and time again that they are not doing the right thing. They are not taking care of themselves in God's people. They are not worshiping God the way they're supposed to. And there's going to be this thing that happens if they don't correct it. And Jeremiah has been saying it over and over. He's getting rejected. He's getting uh, made fun of. There's all these things that are happening, happening with Jeremiah. But he continues to pursue what God has told him to do. And so we get to our story. This is in Jeremiah 36. And God finally, he speaks to Jeremiah again, and he tells him, hey, Jeremiah, here's what I want you to do. I want you to write down everything that I've told you. Now, that seems like a big task. I know myself, I have a terrible memory. I wouldn't have remembered half of the stuff, even if it was God telling me, right? But Jeremiah remembers and he writes it down. I'm sure it was with, the, with God's help that he remembers these things and he writes it down. He has actually a, a, another person named Barak that writes it down for him. And Jeremiah has been not allowed to go into the temple. And so he tells Barak, hey, I want you to take this and I want you to go and I want you to read it in the temple to anyone that will listen. And so once Barak has done all the hard work of writing everything that Jeremiah has learned and heard and said, he goes to the temple and he begins to read it. Now, when the uh, leaders of the area, the leaders of kind of like the temple and the church, they hear this, they're scared because they have heard the word of the Lord and they have not been doing what he has been asking them to do. So they get scared and they say, well, the king's got to hear this. And so they take it to the king. And we know that the king is unfortunately a wicked man. And they have the scroll written down. And as they're reading the scroll to the king, the king is taking a knife. He's cutting it, cutting off the pieces as they read three or four sections at a time. And he chucks it in the fire. 
He says, I don't care. They're not, he's not scared. He's not changed at all by the word of God. And they continue to carve off pieces and throw it into the fire until that scroll is completely destroyed. But here's a wonderful thing. Man cannot destroy what God has created. And God tells Jeremiah, who's been in hiding because they've told him that he's going to be, he, something bad is going to happen and you need to go hide. So he's been in hiding, but God tells him, hey, you need to get another one. And so Jeremiah and Barak go through the task of writing another scroll with everything that God has told them. And so we learn something from this story, like we learn something from every story that is in the word of God. And that's one, we need to read God's word and follow what it says. You know, when your teacher gave you the instructions how to take care of Harvey, maybe you just sat him down next to Harvey and you completely forgot about it. You got so busy that you didn't read the instructions on how to take care of them. And so often that becomes the truth for us. God has given us his word, the Bible, to read instructions for our life, but a lot of times we let it just sit on a desk. We don't take the time to read it and find out what it says, how to take care of ourselves. The second thing is that we need to make sure that we are not living like the world lives. Jesus tells the disciples to live in the world, but not of the world. And he calls us to do the same thing. That doesn't mean we treat people that don't know Jesus poorly. That doesn't mean that we act like they don't exist and only hang out with our Christian friends. We're still to, to uh, be around them, to be able to influence them with the way we live our lives. But we're not to live like they live. So when the people that were in charge of the church read this and they say, the king's got to hear this. They are fearful. They have, know that a change has to happen. But the king says, no, we don't need to do that. The last thing is that we should obey God's word even when it's not easy. It was not easy for Jeremiah to time and time and time again go to the king and say, here's what's going to happen. you got to repent. Here's what's going to happen. you got to change your ways. Here's what's going to happen. But God told him to. And so he obeyed. Often there's things that we see in the Bible that we might not like. Might not be easy for us to do. But God's word tells us that we are to listen and obey to God's instructions. And that will help change our lives to lead a life that is not like everyone else, that can make a change in the world that we live in today. I hope you will be world changers. I hope you will read God's word and listen and follow it. Don't just read it and put it down and go, that was a good story. Listen to what it says. Follow it and be obedient to God. Have a great day.